Good shoulder press. Hey everybody, I've got a really special video for you today because this is the brand new Rivian R1T. It is the first electric pickup truck to hit the market. And I want to see, does it work as a truck? So I've come out here to David Yak Ranch. Hey, welcome again, Tommy. Thank you, sir. So this is a running ranch. You've got a bunch of yak. I do. We've got a bunch of stuff we've got to do. Let's get right to it. Okay. Yuck, 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 yuck. Now, obviously, the Rivian was not designed for farm life. It's not a carpenter's truck or a contractor's truck. It's more of a lifestyle truck. You want to go camping, throw all your stuff in the back, and hit the trails. However, we do want to see here at TFL, is it capable for classic truck stuff? We're going to put it through its limits and see how it does under load, both in the bed, see if the bed is actually usable, see if any of the cool features are usable to someone who uses a truck on a daily basis. Now, first of all, let's go ahead and open up the tailgate, open up the electrically operated tonneau cover. Let's see how long it is from the bulkhead to the tailgate. When measured from the edge of the tonneau cover to the tailgate, we got right around 53 usable inches or roughly four and a half feet with the tailgate closed. When you open the tailgate, rather than hinging along the bed post, we've got these goose neck hinges that actually protrude out of the rear end of the vehicle. And what that means is that the tailgate with this little cover extends significantly beyond the truck. So let's see how long it is. That's very unique, Tommy. It's so much different than any hinge system on any other pickup truck. We have full seven feet. So our plywood's only gonna stick out one foot. Ooh, I don't wanna take a dive on this ice. Yeah, this is pretty gnarly. I wouldn't get back up. But yeah, look, it's only 12 inches. Pretty nice. Now, yeah. can we tie it down? Do we have any, I guess we could go here and there. Where else can we tie it down to keep it from flying out? This one's really too high, so we can't tie it down there. Yeah, we've got the same system over here at the front of the bed, and then these cleats along the bed rails, but um, unless you've yeah. got- If we had like 10, 12 sheets of plywood, we could tie it down there. But maybe the best place is just on the, a hook attachment, we just run a strap over here to keep it from flying out of the back. But one great thing is it fits between the wheel wells. So it some does. of the um, modern trucks that we've been testing recently has to go on top of the wheel wells, but yeah. that's actually pretty decent. In the Rivian, we have two 120 volt power outlets in the bed. Let's see if they're useful. We're gonna go cut firewood today, right? We're gonna fill the whole back end up with firewood. So we need charged batteries. So we'll plug this in here in a second. But I also wanna see if it'll run a sander at 6.5 amps, and then I have a skill saw at 15 amps. A little bit of a slow start, but... But it does it. Cool. All right, let's see the about saw. the skill saw. Here we go. That was a slow start. It did power it, though. Do you think you would cut something? Well, it's not great on your tools to be underpowered. Um, once it got up to speed, it'd probably cut something s small. Yeah. But it wouldn't be good on your tool to do that. What we have here is a DeWalt Mega Charger because a lot of your tools have gone battery powered. Yeah, this is a fast charger and it says it pulls up to eight amps on there. So I'm curious what happens when we plug that in. Because hey, in electric pickup, we ought to have cordless tools, don't you think? Oh, very true. We have a cordless pickup truck. <laughs> it did fire up. You hear that fan? Yeah. This thing chews up the juice because it's fast charging all your batteries all at once. So it's got a fan to keep it cool. But it seems to be working. It seems to be working. Very cool. So now obviously if you want the ultimate onboard power, the F-150 power boost, the hybrid. Yeah, 7.2. Yeah, 7,200 watts. Yeah. Uh, this is somewhere around 1500 watts is what the engineers were telling me. So not quite that, but much more useful than like the Tundra, which is 400 watts. Right, so and the Jeep was like 800 watts 400, or something. 800, yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah, so, you know, most of the time you're gonna be using tools that are cordless offsite anymore. Every tool is cordless. So this is a perfect way to keep yourself going. 
Nice. Well, I yeah. think we should go load up some chainsaws and then go collect some firewood from the top of a mountain. Accelerating in three, two, go. Oh, oh, Tommy. Tommy, stop. That's pretty amazing, right? I felt it like, like right down in here. The Rivian is of course full electric and it rides on what they call a skateboard platform. So yep. there's like um, a, basically a chassis with the big battery mounted and then four electric motors, two at the front, two at the back. And then there is essentially one giant body shell that goes on top of that. Now it must have a very low center of gravity compared to other vehicles. Extremely low, yeah. very low. And we have 835 horsepower and <laughs> over 900 pound feet of torque. <laughs> yeah, I've already felt it inside here. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go into the off-road setting. Okay. Go off-road. And we have four corner air suspension. So we have a bunch of different modes, auto, rock crawl, rally, and drift. Sweet. Maybe we'll do rock crawl. I think See how it does in the snow? So that's gonna jack us up to 15 inches of ride height. <laughs> oh, I can feel it right now. Yeah, so the suspension's going up. Cool. <laughs> now the different off-road modes also change the um, essentially uh, throttle programming, throttle mapping. So right now I'm using a lot of accelerator. Right, and it's right. Yeah, it looked like you pushed down a bunch. A bunch, yep. Huh. And we are just keeping... So that way you can't overspin easily. Yeah, that's the idea, yeah. right? Now this does not have differentials, so to speak, right? Because it's got four individual electric motors. Right. It can just modulate the power and the torque to each wheel. And it can sense when one's spinning. Exactly right. Okay. So you don't, in theory, need a traditional locking diff either because oh. the computers, the ABS sensors can tell when wheels are spinning and then release power to those wheels and send them to the wheels of traction. got a little bit of spin right there for sure that was the first time but it did that pretty much effortless yeah that look was, at that that was impressive now over here too we've got a couple of other settings so we've got hill hold i'm gonna go turn that on and what that means is like when i take my foot off the brake yeah it's not gonna roll back right and then ride let's do soft there's no need to have such a stiff ride oh yeah we got to go in comfort when we're cutting firewood <laughs> So David, what is your first off-road impression in the R1T? Well, it's felt very controlled coming up that hill. And of course, being quiet, it's a whole different sensation than hearing your motor turning over and having to work going up a hill. Yeah, and it's pretty cool because these electric motors make all their torque, you know, practically at zero RPM, there's no need for a low range, right? With a gasoline engine, you have to magnify um, you know, and use that mechanical advantage of a right. low range. There's no four wheel high or four wheel low. It's just four wheel. It just goes. Yeah. Absolutely right. And when you go into the off-road mode, I've, I've stuck it in auto just to kind of see what the difference is. Uh, lots and lots of control. All the inputs become more muffled so you don't end up spinning tires and right. breaking stuff like crazy. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Now the air suspensions need two up to 15 inches of ground clearance. I will say the ride is a little bit more firm than I was kind of hoping or expecting. And I don't think it's quite as well sorted as what Land Rover does. So there's a few clunks and noises that do reverberate through, but um, it is an insane amount of clearance. Yeah, I mean, it still feels very smooth going over the rocks. So I, nothing I can complain about coming from, you know, three quarter one ton pickup trucks. <laughs> but <laughs> This does have the adventure package. So we've got the off-road tires and on the smallest yeah. wheel, you can get 20 inch wheels. And they said they can't go smaller than 20s because of the giant six piston brakes. Well, if you're pulling 11,000 pounds, I think you'd like to have some big brakes. You'd like some big brakes, but when you're off-road, the smaller the wheel and the chunkier the tire, the better. Yeah. So I'd like maybe Agreed. a little bit chunkier tire. Yeah. And then of course you can't really lift this vehicle. Now in theory, you could do lift rods and get it more height. Why would you need any more than 15 inches? Yeah, it's, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> America. I mean. All right, David, we're at the top of the mountain. Now, what are we looking at over here? Well, as I've told you before, Tommy, this burned, I think it was in 2012 is when it burned. And all these trees have been just standing dead for all those years and they rot at the bottom. Yeah. And then the big winds come along and blow them over. So since we were up here last filling up the Maverick, 
a couple of them had blown over on the road down here. Okay. So we're going to have to get the chainsaw out of our compartment and we're going to have to remove some trees from the road. I think we're going to have to remove this one right here actually. We're scraping already on oh, this puppy. We? Okay. Yeah. Well, let's get our chainsaw out and get going to work. How do you open this tailgate? I mean, there's no handle anywhere. Yeah, there's no levers to see. It's actually a little button up here oh. on the side. And then we can see our plywood contraption. Why do we do that? Well, we don't want to hurt this truck. Now, this truck's not not a loaner. It's actually owned by somebody. Yeah, so Rivian, um, well, they did loan us this truck for the week, but it's technically an employee bought it because the marketing truck got damaged oh. coming off of the off of the delivery uh, semi. So okay. the guy named Chad decided to sacrifice his truck for a week and we don't want to break Chad's truck. Yeah, so we're going to treat this bed with a little more kindness than we have up here. All right, so we're going to extend this, right? Yeah, pull that all the way to the back so we don't scuff up anything. Now we can wedge logs in here and feel good about it. Cool. Tommy, this one weighs about 250 pounds right there. <laughs> Maybe 300. <laughs> Maybe three. <laughs> All right, here we go. One, two, three. Oh. Push, Tommy, push. <laughs> push. <laughs> we did it. What a beast. Woo. You were the log. <laughs> I mean, not me for sure. <laughs> Definitely the log. Now we're just gonna creep along to our next log fill zone. And the payload capacity on this truck, this one comes in at about 1,419. You do hear every little stick and twig scratch the bottom of this truck, but there's sandwiches of steel and aluminum armor for the battery, so I'm not worried at all. Nobody does baked I do apologize for the Toyota branding. This is not in any way sponsored or associated with Toyota. It's no? just a warm jacket. They just gave me a warm jacket and I didn't know it had a logo and now I do, so I do apologize. Oh. Oh. Nice hurt on a branch. All right. That one was heavier than it looked. In the middle? Last log. Oh my Last God. log. Except the hook's not. Uh oh, your hook came loose. <laughs> the comments in this video are gonna be on fire. <laughs> well, I'm assuming this part's not gonna make it in. Unless you. Well, yeah, I'll be editing it, so it probably won't make it in. Now you got it, Tommy. We'll start, we'll start the edit here, so you don't show me fumbling around with it. What do you think, David? So this is actually the latch point for the tailgate, but we're going to test it out and see if it'll hold logs in the back of the bed. Hopefully Rivian realized that people are going to use this to secure their load, because that's really the only point when you put a sheet of plywood in here to hold the plywood in place. So. It seems pretty stout. Now the cool thing about the gear tunnel right is when we did this test with the Ford Maverick we had to put the chainsaw up on top of the log because it's sharp and pointy. You don't want that in the cab, it's dirty. But in the Rivian there's this tunnel which is meant to get dirty and, and poked and scratched. So very cool piece of uh, tech that's actually I think quite useful. It's got a rubber mat in there so the chain can't cut the carpet. Okay now we have to turn this massive load around in this sketchy looking field covered in snow. Of 
of course people are like, well this would be handy if you had the tank turn, which is this cool thing they released a long time ago, which basically allows a vehicle to spin in its own length by running the motors in opposite directions. But that hasn't actually been implemented and quite honestly, I don't really see the point of it because any point where you would need a tank turn like this grassy knoll, I mean, you wouldn't really want to use it. It would tear up the land severely and with the load in the back, it could be kind of dangerous. But so far the traction's very impressive. Well, we got our work in today, Tommy. <laughs> Look at me, I'm covered in black soot. We'll clean it out real well, <laughs> okay. but hey, I mean, it's a, it's still at the end of the day a truck and we're doing truck stuff. That's, that's true, it's still a truck. You know, I can't imagine what it must be like to try and start a new company, uh, much less an auto automotive company like this. Not only to assemble a team, but to come up with the design, come up with all the materials and the supply chain, and to actually make a vehicle that can do what we've done today. It just, and the guy's only what? The CEO is like 36 years old. Yeah, he's a young dude. Incredible. having an issue right here it gets a little off kilter toward the cliff edge and um, well it's uh, it's starting to slip toward the edge of the cliff which is not what we want at all oh thank you sir and our road is very narrow right here. Yeah, I don't like that very much. But we're just gonna take it super easy. So we don't wanna end up in the river down there. Now, no. speaking of rivers, did you know that the name has something to do with rivers? No, can you explain that? What does well, that mean? I was reading about them, you know, doing my homework as I should be. And uh, the RJ is his name, Yep. right? RJ, he spent a lot of time in Florida on the Indian River. And so he took three letters of river and three letters of Indian and came up with Rivian, which is a very cool name. So David, we're heading down this super steep trail, right? And it um, has a little snow on it. A little bit of snow, yeah. And this is one of the coolest features of off-roading with an electric vehicle, the regenerative braking. Yeah, I see you don't have your foot on the brake pedal. I'm not touching the brake whatsoever. What's going on is we're essentially dragging the motors, um, adding resistance to the tires and slowing us down as we go down the hill and in turn, putting electricity back into the battery, kind of like you would on a yeah. giant alternator. And now we are heading back to David's ranch and what an adventure that was. I was not expecting to A, put this much wood in the back of this thing, because I, I thought it would fit and B, it's just a huge amount of wood. Um, but it's handling it, and it's handling it with a lot of composure. So David, obviously pretty far from the intended purpose of this vehicle, but what did you think of the Rivian? Well, there weren't many things that I could find that I didn't like about it, but there was one glaring one, the sound. They pipe in this sound when it's going forward and backwards. It sounds like a washing machine for crying out loud, Rivian. <laughs> but that's the only thing I could find I didn't like about it. All right, there are two things that I don't like about okay, it. Okay, what's that? From a usability standpoint. Say we were off road getting our logs, we get a flat tire. Oh. How, how do we get our flat tire out? Our We'd spare be tire. them twice. And loading them twice. Yeah, so the spare tire lives underneath the bed like a ridge line. And yep. you have to lift up the bed bottom. That's true. And you're not going to do that with 1,500 pounds of wood on the back. Well, we'd have to do it because we're not going to get home without doing it. <laughs> and then the other thing I don't like, and this was actually your find, but if you look at the tailgate design with those cool goose hinges, yeah, um, there's a lot of potential for sand and twigs and rocks to get caught up in Bark, that, in that snow. Flap. Yeah, yeah. But overall, though, I mean, it has air suspension, so it didn't squat at all. Yeah. Tons of power. Oh man, my heart's still like oh, right down deep in here from that. Wow. And very good four wheel drive system. Yeah, yeah that's the, impressive. The future, at least in terms of capability, if we can get the price down, make it a little bit more usable for um, people that work with their hands, ranchers, that kind of yep. thing, 
Yep. This could be a massive seller even in non-EV states. Agreed. Yeah. If the bark and stuff just falls through here and then goes down in this hole right there, that hole just goes to nowhere. It looks to me like it'll just collect a bunch of crap and uh, be problematic. But that's a minor thing. So I do have some better news though. After a full day of going up and down the mountain, I had to do it twice because we forgot the straps. Yeah. And playing with the truck and loading it up and all that, we only used 8% of the battery. Oh wow, that's pretty good. It's and we didn't bad. damage anything. No. So Chad, your truck is in one piece. <laughs> yeah. It is full of sticks, but they will be cleaned out right. before delivery back to you. But yeah, very yeah. impressed. Thank you much, Chad. So tell me, what'd you bring me today? What kind of motors it got in it? I got a 454 big block Chevy in my truck. What do you got in this one? Tommy, what'd you do with the motor? There ain't no motor in here. How can this thing go with no motor? Can I put myself a 100 gallon electric tank in the back of this so I can go extra distance? My pickup don't have a flashlight. Woo, look at that. Now that's fancy.